Okay, let's get a start on lab 7. It says find and configure hyperterminal to be 9600 baud. Now we're going to find that is if you take a look here and under all programs and you go to accessories and communications you'll find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it up and uh, as we do this it doesn't matter it's going to say new connection let's just zoom in a little bit here it's going to say new connection so you can call it anything you like doesn't matter I'm just going to type in AA and say OK and it's going to have some sort of configuration set here for COM3 or whatever it is for your lab mostly in the lab it will be COM8 but you should check with your instructor to make sure and we're just going to say OK now the other thing that you have to make sure of and it should say 9600 baud here so let's change this to 9600 baud it should be automatically set up in the lab and your flow control should be none so that's basically how you're going to have things 9600 baud 8 data bits no parity one stop bit none and we can just say OK so once we've got that set up we have a little bit more to worry about we just have to go file properties and under properties we're going to go to settings and change this auto detect to ANSI American National Standards Institute once you've done that you're ready to go so let's back up a little bit here so let's just put this over here and click back to see what we have to do next it says make sure it's configured to be COM ports or USB is available to it and then we're going to put three ASCII characters on your hyperterminal screen using Code Warrior so let's take a look here we got Code Warrior and what you're going to need here is you're going to need the memory browser you're going to set it up for eight columns one um, byte per whatever here for cell size and ASCII over here that's what you're gonna to have to have that set up for I'm just gonna make this just a little bit smaller and at the same time what we want to do is just for fun let's bring up hyperterminal right beside it over here so that's what we're gonna be doing we're gonna have these two screens that we're gonna be working with now one of the first things you're going to have to do over here is to set the baud rate and what we have to know is that address 20 and 21 over here is the thing that sets up our baud rate so to understand how to do that let's just go back and take a look here uh, let's take a look here and see where we find out how to set up the baud rate well if we take a look here under course documents under course documents is a number of different things and we're going to be looking at the HCS08 manual so if we take a look there let's go back up here a bit I've already got it open over here and this I believe let's take a look this is on page 40 and it tells you here basically how you're going to calculate the baud rate so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up the calculator here and show you how this is going to work so right now it says baud rate is given by bus clock divided by 16 times the number that we have to put into the baud uh, register to make this work so if you're thinking about this a little bit what you can figure out is the number that we need is equal to the bus clock over 16 times the baud rate so we can work back the other way now our bus clock speed is 20 megahertz two zero one two three four five six and what we want to do is divide that by 16 divided by 16 and then we're going to take that number again and divide it by 9600 which is our baud rate and that gives us a number of 130 here now what we want to do is put this in in hex so we're just going to switch this from decimal to hex and there's where you get your 82 so 82 is the number that we're going to have to put into there so let's go back and take a look at what we've got here and let's bring up um, hyperterm would be cited so over here let's just focus on the screen for a second so in address 20 and 21 we have to have 0, 0, 82 so we're just going to punch in 82 remember to hit the enter key at this point when the enter key is done it's now changed the baud rate for the SCI to be the number we want also this is address 20 21 22 23 and this is really forming it what we call SCI2 and this is one that connects the keyboard to the screen using hyperterminal here so 0082 we also have SCI1 and we can do the same sort of things here SCI1 connects a DE1 board to the other DE1 board uh, on the terminal next to you we're just going to work with this we can deal with this later as we'll see 
Uh, what we need to so this is 20, 21, 22, 23. Address 23 happens to be the control register 2. And what we have to put in here is a 0C and hit enter. And the 0C, if you think about it, is a bunch of zeros, then 1100. Zero, zero. The two ones that are in here enable the transmitter, which sends stuff to the screen here, and the keyboard. So we have to have both those enabled. Now, if we want to send characters to the screen, what we have to do is double click on this, which is our status register 1. We're going to put a 0, 0 in here to make it read. Notice it read a D0. And what we're going to do over here is we're going to punch in a 41. Now watch what happens when I hit a 41 up here. The 41 disappeared, but up on the screen here, I have the capital letter A. Now the first part of the lab is to actually put three ASCII characters up on the screen, but we don't want just any ASCII characters. We want the first three ASCII characters that form your name. So David Ross would be D-A-V. That's what you need for your first initial up here. Now one of the other things, if we click on this screen, and I'm just going to press a capital letter U. Notice nothing happened, but if we go back here to this address, which is 27, and I just put 00 and hit enter, there's the 55, which is the U. So one of the things that we'll find is to put characters up on the screen, we have to check this first and then send a character. Let's just try sending a character. Let's just try sending 55 to the screen. Nothing happened. Let's try that again. Let's put a 55, enter. Nothing comes up on the screen. Why? because we have to check this by putting a 0, 0 in here first, and then we can put whatever number we want, then it goes to the screen. So sending stuff to the screen, we have to have the baud rate set up, we have to have the transmitter and receiver enabled. We have to also read the status register, which is called SCI2 status register 1. We have to read that, and the way we read that is by putting in a 0, 0 to read back the, the contents, which is the read, and then we can put any number we want. Now I'm going to put in a 42, uh, and I'm going to hit enter, and the 42 comes to here. But if I put a 43 here, nothing. So, But the other thing is, as I said, if you click on the screen here, and I press a character, I'm just going to put in a random character here. I'm not going to show you what it is. And I wonder what that random character is. When I put a 0, 0 here, I get that it is the capital letter Z, which is a 5A. So when we send characters to the screen, we have to read the status register. When we read characters from here, it doesn't really require us to do that. But you'll see in the code that we're going to do later that you will have to take that into account. So the next part of Lab 7 is to take the program on page 99 and put it into Code Warrior, which I'll show you shortly. And it says modify each key press that you enter so it shows up on the green LEDs. Describe what happens and doesn't happen when you hit the enter key. So let's take a look at the program. And here's the program here on page 99. I've put it in here. I've changed it. it takes character from the PC keyboard, sends it to the PC screen using HyperTerminal. And you'll notice that there's some interesting bit of coding down here it says SCI2D equals SCI2D and you're going what how can that be how can two things be the same well let's take a look over here blackboard here and this is coming right out of the course notes this is page 93 of chapter 6 and what you're going to find is the transmitter here has exactly the same name as the receiver the receiver is called SCI2 D. This is also called SCI2D. And the read-write line that we've got here determines which one that you're talking to. So if something's coming in, that's the receiver, that's SCI2D. If something's coming in and going onto the data bus into a accumulator or something, if something's coming back the other way and going to the transmitter which shows up on the screen, that's SCI2D as well. So when you say SCI2D equals SCI2D, the one that's on the right-hand side is where you're getting your information, which is your receiver, and the transmitter is on the left-hand side of the equal sign, which is saying I'm now sending it to the screen. So basically, you're going to hit a character on the keyboard, it's going to come into the receiver, and the receiver data register full flag will indicate, yes, there's something there, and then it's going to go into an accumulator, and then it's going to say, okay, now take that, send it back, here to the transmitter, wait for the transmitter data register to be empty, and send it to the screen. So the upshot of all this is it's going to connect the keyboard to the screen through an accumulator over here. This is the receiver, this is the transmitter. 
So, and the thing is, once you head a character on the keyboard, it's going to stay there for quite a bit of time. So all we're going to do is say LEDG equals SCI2D. Now I have our program running, and what it's doing here in our code is it's basically saying wait for a key press to come in from the keyboard and it's going to sit in this loop until it does and then it says okay wait until the transmitter data register is empty to send it to the screen when it's empty it's going to then take what's in the receiver send it to the screen which will show up over here then it's going to take what's in the receiver and then send it to the green LEDs and keep doing this over and over again. So let's see what is going to happen when I do that. So if I click on this screen over here, so what's going to happen is I hit each character. I'm going to hit a capital letter H and notice what we have here is a 48. So every time I hit a character it's going to show up on the screen because it's going from the receiver which is my keyboard to the screen and it's also going to go on the green LEDs over here. Now if I type hi there how are you question mark and this is the question mark which is a 3F if I hit the enter key and you'll notice the enter key is a 0D and one of the things it asks on the lab is what happens and what doesn't happen well what happens when I hit the carriage return or enter key it puts us right back to the start of the same line. What does it not do? It does not move us to a new line. If I hold that or type the lowercase a, lowercase a is a 61. And if I hold down the shift key and press a, that gives me a capital A here, which is a 41. If I do hold down the control character and press an a, I get a strange happy face here, but I get a 01 on our LEDs. Now if I press a small letter b, I get a 62. If I do a shift B, I get a 42. And if I do a control B, I get an inverted happy face, but I get a 02. So what you're going to find is that we can generate the ASCII characters uh, as we see here. Let's take a look. So if I want to do a 01, it's control A, control B, control C, control D, and so on to generate all of these other characters. So if I just press an A, I get a 61. If I do a shift, it takes out one bit to make it a 41. If I press a control A, it takes out two bits to make it a 01. So we're going to see 62 for B, 42, 02. So that's what's going to happen here. Now, what we're sending is we're sending a carriage return, as we saw, which is a 0D. But what we want to do is move it to a new line, which is a line feed, which is a 0A. Now this is control A, control B, control C. So when you get down to the line feed, it's control J, because J is the tenth letter of the alphabet. So let's go back and see how that's going to work. So right now, I'm going to hit the enter key. We're back at the start. Notice we've got a zero A here. If I do a control J, it moves us down. So when you take a look at a backslash N and C, it generates two characters, a zero D, to put you back to the start of the same line here plus a line feed which is a 0A that moves you down. Now as I keep typing like this and if I do a control J and continue to type notice what the control J or line feed does it moves you vertically down without any horizontal movement. So that's the kind of thing that we have to answer in this first part here if we go back and take a look at the lab uh, what happens and what doesn't happen the enter key moves you back to the start of the same line it does not move you to a new line. Now what it's asking us here is what keys would you hit to generate an audible bell? Now if we take a look here, audible bell is a 7. The seventh letter of the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, so that would be a control G. Now when we're running our code, and let's go back here, if we're running our code and we hit a control G, you may have heard it, you may not have, uh, because in the lab what we have is that you have to have a headset in with a little mini plug to listen to what's going on because we have no speakers built in. So you may or may not hear that. So let's take a look at what else we need. Um, line feed. Well, we've just done a line feed. Let's remind ourselves what a line feed is. A line feed is the tenth letter of the alphabet, which is control J. Uh, what else do we need here? Let's take a look. Horizontal tab. Well, let's take a look and see what a horizontal tab is. Horizontal tab is a 9. Well, if this is a control J, 
what comes before J I. So let's go back and take a look at our code running. So if we do a control I, you can see that it actually tabs across the screen quite nicely. And on earlier keyboards, uh, way back in the day, if you didn't have a tab, you would hit control I. Form feed. Let's take a look at form feed. So what character generates a form feed? Well, if you look it up, it's a, uh, a 0C, which if you work it down, control L. What did a control L do? Well, look at that. It cleared the screen. But it does more than that. Uh, a form feed on a printer will actually make the printer go to the top of the next print form. It actually ejects paper. And on our PC screen here, it basically just clears the screen. Let's take a look at carriage return. Carriage return, if we look down here is a 0D. How do we generate that? Well, that's J, K, L, M. So if we do a control M, let's type in some stuff and then just do a control M. You'll see that indeed it does move us back to the start of the same line. And describe in words what happens when you do these things. Audible bell makes a one kilohertz tone. In the old days, it used to be a real cowbell but today it's just a little beep. A uh, line feed moves you vertically down without any horizontal movement. Horizontal tab moves you to the next tab position. Form feed on the screen clears the screen or rejects paper on a printer. Carriage return moves you back to the start of the same line. Now it says use ANSI escape sequences on page 97 as you run this program to do a number of things. There's a list of escape sequences that are used to clear the screen and other escape sequences that are used to position the cursor anywhere on the PC text screen. Now let's take a look at running some of the code and escape less square bracket to capital J. Now these capitals and lowercase letters and so on, these are important that you have these as capital J's. Make sure you check your shift lock character. But let's go back down and take a look here. So if I do an escape and watch at the same time what's going on here. If I do an escape, that's a 1B. If I do a left square bracket, there is the character for left square bracket, 2, and capital J. Now notice nothing has come to the screen here as I'm typing these characters, but if it finishes off with a J, the screen is now clear. So these are ANSI escape sequences. Nothing appears in the screen until you finish typing in this sequence. Now notice there's a sequence down here that says escape left square bracket 12 semicolon capital H. So if I do escape left square bracket 1 2 semicolon 40 capital H I've positioned my cursor of uh, uh, rows 1 through 24 here uh, columns 1 through 80 I've positioned it pretty much right in the center of the screen. So we have escape sequences to clear the screen, we have escape sequences to position the cursor, and these are being used, as you'll see later, by SCR set cursor. We'll use these kind of escape sequences. Uh, SCR clear will use the escape list square bracket 2J to clear the screen. So these are some of the things that will be happening in the background. Now, there are a number of other ANSI escape sequences besides clearing the screen and positioning the cursor. For instance, if I do an escape, left square bracket, 1 semicolon 33 semicolon 44 small m, nothing seems to have happened until I start typing characters. And do you notice that their screen color now has changed? So, and here's something else. We were talking about the form feed before. If I do a control L, watch that, my whole screen not only cleared, but it made the attributes into blue. Now you can look these up and play with them, but that's not part of the lab. This is for extra fun, but you can change screen colors and stuff. And on old DOS-based systems, this allowed us to use various colors and do various things using these ANSI escape sequences. Now the next part of this is let's use some of these to clear the screen, position the cursor, so your full name is centered in the middle of the screen. Now based on what we talked about just a while ago, uh, middle of the screen down the left side would be row 12 out of 24. So that's going to be a pretty much given. But we have to figure out where do we want to position the cursor to start printing our name so when we're finished it's going to be right in the middle of the screen. Now my name happens to be 8 plus 1 space, 9 characters long. We know that uh, we need the same number of spaces to the left of my name as to the right of my name, so let's call that X 
and x. So 2x plus 9 equals 80. Solve for x and then we're going to round this to the nearest possible number. Now, I could have made this 35 or 36. I decided to round up to 36 so that's going to be 12 and 36. So let's see how we go about running this up. So right now escape left square bracket 12 semicolon 36 make sure it's capital H and then I'm just going to type in Dave R O S S and I'm all set to get my initial because as you can see there's the same number of spaces this side as there is this side nine spaces for in my name total of 80 and I put my name on the screen so that's what we need for an instructor's initial here now it says to create a function called SCR right character that sends a single character to the screen the prototype should be this and you can use this to send any character including an equal sign or any character we want and that's what we're going to do next now what I've done so far is I've just added a function prototype as it says in the lab I put the function definition in place but I haven't put anything in and I've used the example that they asked us to use SCR right character single quote equals single quote what we're going to do is we're just as soon as we write that we're going to sit here in an endless loop and wait. Now we have to sort of come up with a code for this and we can borrow some of the stuff from before because what we're waiting for is waiting for the transmitter to be empty and that's what we have to do. It's saying while SCI1 ended with 0x80 is not equal to 080 then it's going to sit here and wait in a loop. Now there's a couple ways to write this but this is as good as any. So until the transmitter is empty, once it's empty what we want to do is say the transmitter and if you remember SCI2D is going to equal what came in which in our case happens to be SAM. And that's our function. And we can check this out and let's do that and run up our code and see if we get an equal sign. Now we're ready to run our code. I've compiled what we had and before when I run it here we go and you can see that wherever the um, cursor was last left you're going to get this character and there it is the equal sign so it was left after my name so when I run it that's where it's going to send it and that's all you really need to show for whatever demonstration you want so now we have a function that is not in our Arduino library that should have been we have an LCD underscore write ch now we have an scr underscore write ch for here and you've got your own function that you've done that for isn't that cool okay the next thing we're going to do is create a program using arduino like functions so far we have not used any arduino like functions we've created one and we're going to be using these to clear the screen and position the cursor and then print out this across here so if we happen to hit a capital letter a it's going to print a equals whatever it is as a hex number another equals and then whatever it is in binary now the right character we're going to use for the a for the equals we're going to use scr right uh, here for the 41 and scr right character again for here and then we're going to have to either write a 0 or a 1 based on the bits that are here and we'll see how to do that shortly let's take a look first of all uh, it says to center this stuff in the center of the screen uh, and uh, or we should center it in the center of the screen so we've got one two three four five and eight we have 13 characters now we're going to start with this what we've had before it hasn't changed it's taking a character from the PC keyboard and sending it to the PC screen using hyperterminal it's doing some fancy formatting but well, let's take a look at some of the things we don't need. We still need to write character and that's not in our function. What do we not need? We do not need this because what we're going to find is that SCR uh, or SCI2, DBDH and all this kind of stuff is already being used by, strangely enough, devices in it. So all we're going to have to do is again put in our include. So we're going to have to add or include e colon backslash library underscore de1 dot h and then we're going to make sure we put our library in. we have to do all that but let's start writing our code first so we're going to do lcd underscore rows equals four 
even though we don't really need this, LCD underscore calls, these are just standard things you can put in. Now, since we're not using the LCD, if we want it, we can actually send characters to LCD as one. But the main thing here is devices underscore init. So devices init does all the SCI2 initialization. Later, when you want to send characters to the other board, there is no SCI1 initialization, but devices in it does do the SCI2 initialization, so that's all handled. So right now, what we want to do is write the character that we type in from the keyboard. So KB underscore get char is what we're going to use. So let's go back and uh, KB underscore gets char. Now, we're going to have to set up some variable to equal that. So let's go up and where do we put our variables if you remember? Yes, variables come first, bump, bump, bump. So volatile, volatile, unsigned, char, input. So we're going to down here say input equals KB get char. Now what I've done is I've just said file open and I've opened up, as you can see here, library underscore de1.h. And how do we get to it quickly? If you remember, we, were, we do a control F on this screen. And what I look for is kb underscore get char. And when we do that, we can find the actual description of what is kb underscore get char. It's right above the unsigned char kb get char uh, function prototype. This function will return a 0, 0 or null if no key was pressed or will return the actual ASCII character if it key has been pressed. So 99.99999% of the time it's going to return a 0, 0 and that can be an issue. So let's go back to our code and see what we're going to do. Let's go back to main.c and let's zoom back out here. So when we have kb input equals kb get char then we want to say while this is not equal to zero because otherwise we haven't really gotten a character have we so what we're going to do is we're going to say in front of this while input equals get char bracket not equal to zero now we're going to have to put other brackets around this. Let's take a look. This is key and it's going to give us a warning on this as we'll see. So what we're checking here is let's just zoom in a little bit and discuss this a little bit. It's going to say assignment in condition which is fine. But what it's saying here is let's get a character from the keyboard, put it into input and while it's not equal to zero, it's going to sit here. So it's going to wait until you actually hit a character. Isn't that cool? Now, we don't want to write in equals yet. We're going to be doing some other stuff. Let's see what some of that other stuff is going to be. So when we get a valid character, what are we going to do? We're going to scr underscore write ch that value, which in our case is, whoops, is input. So we're going to do that, which is handy. Then we're going to put in equals. Then we're going to do an SCR write of input as well. And then we're going to put another equals. And if you remember, let's not write any more than we have to. So let's just do a control C. And let's hit an enter and do a control V. So this is going to say, if we hit an A, it's going to say here, a equals 41 equals and then we have to worry about the binary. What we're going to have to do is set up a loop and if we're going to set up a loop we're going to need another variable. So unsigned char input and we only need eight so let's say count. So we're going to put a loop in here where we're going to say four count equals one count less than or equal to eight for eight characters and then finally plus plus count. So inside our loop what we're going to do is we're going to have to check each character uh, to make sure that uh, everything is right. Whoops, that should be, I was wondering why I was getting this little thing here. So that should be a plus plus count. There we go. That goes away. 
Now before we get going on this, we left a logic error here. Let's take a look. Let's zoom in a little bit and do you spot what it is? Let's just slide over a little bit here. It says while the input character is not equal to null, which means when it is null, it's going to go down here. And logic can really mess you up because what we're really saying is when it is null, we want to sit and wait in the loop. And when it's not null, which means it's a valid character, continue on. Now to finish this off, we're going to need another variable. Let's call it mask. And what we're going to do is mask out each character in our array. Now before we go into our loop, we're going to set mask equal to 0 x 8 0. And then later inside our loop, we're going to then shift mask over. Let's do this. Mask greater than greater than 1. And what this means is that every time through the loop, we're going to mask with 8, 0, then 4, 0, then 2, 0, then 1, 0. And based on that, we're going to decide whether we print a 1 or a 0. So we're going to say, let me just back out here a little bit. We're going to say if bracket input ended with mask, then which means if it's a 1 case, we're going to say SCR right character a 1. Okay? And if it's not, else, oops, else SCR underscore right CH A0. And that should be our code there. Let's see, we've got a forever loop and I've added in here to set a cursor. I worked out where the cursor is going to be. It's going to be on row 12, column 33. So middle row and 33 over because when you work out the 13 that we had and do the, the calculation that we had before, that should work. So it should have, and we have a problem here, ended with mask. And let's see, what is it saying here? Syntax error. Oh, here it is here. Notice that one simple little thing like this can really mess you up because there we go. It's part of an if else. Isn't that weird? So now everything should be fine. <laughs> Let's uh, compile this, run it up, and see what happens. Now, as I mentioned at the outset, if we take a look at this, there is a problem with this code. And as it said here, assignment in condition, which is really talking about this line. The reason that it's complaining about this line is that usually you just have a double equals for assignment and if you have a single equals it says that's a problem. But what we're doing is we're getting a character from the keyboard, putting it in into input and then checking to see if input is equal to zero. If it is, stay in the loop. If it's not, continue on. So that's fine. What we're going to see is that there is an error in this program and I've intentionally put it in to show you a little bit of troubleshooting in here. So when we run this up, we're not going to get the expected result. We're going to get something reasonably close, but not exactly what we want. So let's run it and take a look at what we're seeing here. If I hit an A, I get that. If I hit a B, I get that. All the time I'm getting zeros. I'm not getting exactly what I expect. So no matter what I hit, I'm getting zeros. This is not right. So let's take a look and let's suspend what we've got here. And we're going to use this little button here called reset. So I'm going to reset so we can troubleshoot. I'm just going to hit reset. And we go back here. Uh, right now it's in our startup code. And that's startup. So we're just going to trace through that. Now some of the tracing that we're going to do is going to be based on to step into or step over. Now most of the stuff we can do is just step over. And right now as you look here we're in our code. And so we're in our main. So as we go back up here, we're going to step over. And the ones that we definitely have to step over as we go down through here is we have to step over anything that has to do with our Arduino-like functions. So let's do a step into. So we're down here, LCD rows and columns, step into. But when we get to devices in it, we definitely have to do a step over because it's going to do a whole bunch of stuff. Everything's going to go blank for a while. Then it comes back and says, OK, we're here. At this point, what it's going to do, let me just uh, break this screen down a little bit. Let's just minimize the screen so we can see what's going on. And watch what's going on over here at the same time. So if we now continue on with the process 
and hit step into where right now we've set our cursor here that's where we are and it's waiting for a keyboard character so if I do a step into or step over here it's going to sit here waiting so I haven't hit a character yet I'm going to hit the capital letter A whoops wrong place I have to click on the screen there we go and hit a capital letter A now if I trace ahead now and step over I've already got the A now where is it let's zoom in here input if we take a look and zoom in on this part here input has got the 41 so we can trace through and see what input has got right now mask is zero which is fine let's zoom back out again and keep tracing we're going to now do a step over and we've got input there's their A then we got our equals then we have our equals then we have where, where we're into our code now now mask is 80 and we can see mask is definitely 80 up here let's continue to trace step over uh, for count count is one now and input ended with mask seems fine it should put up to zero that's fine mask greater than greater than but notice what we found here mask did not change it's still 80 oh my god that's what our error is because it should be mask equals mask shifted so let's go back correct that and come back and look at our code now one of the things that I've done as I mentioned before is I've changed this to be mask equals mask greater than greater than one that's a common mistake most people make let's run up our code and let's go to our screen here and I'm gonna hit a look at that 41 small letter a 61 control a 01 everything seems to work quite well now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to again suspend our code and I'm gonna go over here and reset and let's trace through our code once again but this time we'll, we know that it does work and we don't have to troubleshoot it but let's see how the difference is now so let's go and do step over step over step over go down through here LCD rows and columns setting up our variables the device is init takes a little while everything's initialized with real hardware we position our cursor we can see our cursor is now positioned over here let's continue on uh, while now it's sitting here waiting for character so I'm going to hit a capital letter U now I just clicked on the screen to do that now if I keep tracing I'm going to hit this and we can see here uh, our input is a 55 55 is kind of nice because 55 is 0, 01 0, 01 0, 01 0, 01 which allows us to check out to see if how that thing works actually as we go through so let's go through here we've got our equals you can see it happening all over here to the right and you can see our variables are going to change as well count and so on so we can zoom in just a little bit more if you want here so we can see all of our variables are definitely changing so if we continue on we're going to see input ended with mask and so on SCR right zero that's fine then when we go back the next time uh, we can see that mask is now and this is very important that we didn't have happening before we can see that mask is 40 this time which is the way it should be so as we continue tracing along we can see that yes count is changing everything's working now we're getting our one so that's what I'm saying tracing and so on we can go at this point we can go into run mode because everything seems to be working fine we can hit any number we want and uh, let's go back I have to click here <laughs> I have to hit anything I want on the keyboard and things will happen on our screen. So we've got this part working. Now we have to modify the program so instead of taking a key press and sending it to the screen, it takes the lower eight switches and sends the equivalent character to the screen. If we look at our code, it uh, was taking everything from the keyboard. So what we want to do is we can make a very simple thing here we don't have to worry about waiting for characters from keyboards or anything we can just make one simple change here input whoops input equals SWL and uh, everything should work okay as you can see here what I've done is I've got our switches set at 41 and over here we've got A equals 41 so as I try and start changing the switches I can change the switches to 42 43 44 and so on and if we talked about before if you flip this switch here whoops this switch up this switch controls whether you're doing uppercase or lowercase characters 
So just switching this up, and if I flip these both down, there is that 0, 3. So 63, 43, 0, 3. So um, you might get some extra garbage coming up when you first start running this program, which is fine. Let's take a look and see what we have to do next on lab 7. Let's go back here. When um, So we've modified that, so we should get initial. We just have to finish some stuff off. It says modify the program, so taking a key press. MSB is high. These are not ASCII characters. Oh, interesting. Let's take a look. So this is the MSB switch here. So if I flip this up, I'm getting non-ASCII characters. These are some of the things that you'll find in an ASCII, in an ex well, it's called an extended ASCII chart, but it's actually alternate characters. And so these are all alternate characters. Now what it's saying here is to put in EC. So it's 11101100. And if we zoom in a little bit here and take a look what that is, wow, to infinity and beyond. That's what it is. So that's what we're going to do. Set the switches, show the character that's here, and it's going to be an infinity symbol. Now, again, it's got our ASCII chart here on the last page. And also, it's got all of our what it calls extended ASCII, which is really alternate characters. And if we look at EC, indeed, it is the uh, infinity symbol. So that's all you really need to do to finish off Lab 7.